What's up guys, my name is Matt, and welcome to Nancy Drew, Secret of the Old Clock. I've always wanted to play an Nancy Drew game. Well, I have, but I've always wanted to actually play it on here. Welcome to my latest case, The Secret of the Old Clock. To start, choose Junior or Senior Detective. If you're new to adventure games or need some help, click on Tutorials. Well, we're going right into it. I'm going to pick Junior Detective because it's been a long time since I've done this. Hopefully I can get this to work as well. Like if this, if you're seeing this, then it worked. If not, then I'm the only one hearing this. And I'm probably gonna have to turn the music down. Like I've already turned it as low as it can go. So yeah. Wait. One second. Unless I'm just dumb. The year 1930. The place, the road to Titusville. Yeah, it's as low as it can go. Okay, let's start. The year 1930. The place, the road to ah, Titusville, yes. where we find Nancy Drew behind the wheel of her blue roadster, pondering this question. Why did Emily Crandall, a girl whom Nancy knows only through their mutual friend, Helen Corning, ask Nancy to drive all the way out to the Lilac Inn to see her? Does it have something to do with the fact that Emily's mother died barely a month earlier, leaving Emily to run the restaurant with only her guardian to help her? And more important, why, when she called, did Emily sound so desperate? The spunky teenager turns off the main road, blissfully unaware that Emily isn't all that awaits her at the end of the driveway. No, Nancy Drew is about to get her first taste of the mystery, intrigue, and adventure that are to become her destiny. You don't have to narrate everything that happens, sir. Ooh. Ooh, Matt. Dude, zippy is zippy gas. I like uh, I'm gonna try and turn the volume down because like this is loud even for me and it's like the loudest and the quietest it can be but yeah um first question the question of the day is oh, oh pie I don't even organize this whatever the question of the day is are you excited for this series? Like, I've been waiting to do this, trying to do this series for a little bit. Uh, any Nancy Drew game. This isn't my first pick of a game I play, but I just don't want to play it. Let's go right in. Well, hello. I'll bet my bloomers you're Nancy Drew. That's right. Are you Emily's guardian? You got it. I'm Jane Willoughby. I'm Emily's guardian, but only for the next three months until she turns 18. Then she's on her own. Mmm, it smells like someone's been baking pies. Pies are the Lilac Inn specialty. We get orders from all over. Oh, that reminds me your father called. You're supposed to call him. You can use the coin phone on the porch. Emily didn't say anything about you coming until just this morning. She didn't? Don't get me wrong, she can invite anybody here she wants. It's just that she's gotten so darn forgetful lately. Is she all right? Well, now that's hard to say. She misses her mom, that's for sure. So do I. Gloria and me, we were best friends, you know? The two of us ran this swell little dress shop over in Capital City. But then she got hitched and I didn't. And the next thing I know, she's writing me saying it would sure take a load off her mind if I could take care of her little girl should something ever happen to her. Yeah, her Emily's like, no. father died in the war. Cantigny, I think. Anyway, I couldn't say no. I mean, what are best friends for? I just wish I knew how to help Emily. One sec. Oh. So he died. I, ju I just looked up what Cantignity was. It, it was a battle and he died. It, it was World War One battle. But yeah, I should probably get back to this. You make it sound like she's in some kind of trouble. She's been acting so... Look, go talk to her. She probably just needs to spend some time with a bear cat like you instead of some dumb Dora like me. Go on up. She's in her room. 
Just make like a Boy Scout and be prepared. That's a good joke. Because <laughs> that's the Boy Scout motto. Ooh, ragtime music. Definitely tell this is the 30s, because jazz, like, th like this form of jazz, actually originated from the 20s. But it was popular until like 50s, 60s. It was just going in. Shut the window. Nancy, hi. Welcome to the Lilac Inn. Oh, and before I forget, thank you for that nice note you sent me when Mom died. It meant a lot to me. Well, I lost my mom, too, years ago. I kind of know how you feel. You and I may not be best friends or anything, but you're still one of the nicest people I know. Well, thank you. That's why I'm hoping you'll do me a favor, a big favor. You and your dad? What kind of favor? Ah, Shh. What's wrong? I Why is it that loud? I heard something. Your father has a safe, right? This is 1930. Lots of people have safes. See this jewelry? I'd like you to take it home with you and put it in your father's safe. It's beautiful. It was my mother's. The few times I saw her wear it, she looked just like a movie star. I was hiding it here in my room, but all things considered, I'd feel a lot better if you would just take it home and have your father lock it up in his safe. What do you mean, all things considered? Strange things have been going on around here. That's all I can say. I know it sounds loony, and Jane probably told you that I've been acting loony, but please do this for me. My ears. What was that? Ah! Emily, come downstairs, quick! The kitchen's on fire! Come on, we better get out of here! My ears. <coughs> Sorry about that. But yeah, like, there's, like, I have to turn that this down, like, horrible, dramatically. Just horrible. The fire chief says the stove was completely destroyed and there's smoke damage everywhere. The inn will have to shut down for months, maybe even for good. Does he know what caused the explosion? It looked to him like one of the burners on the stove had been left on. The flame either went out or was never lit, but anyway, something made a spark and boom. Mm. He said insurance companies are very reluctant to pay out when things look hinky. And that's when times are good. Where did Emily go? She was right here. Emily was the last person to use the stove. Like I said, She's been real forgetful lately. I think she's pretty upset, but it's not her fault. What with her mom passing away barely a month ago, and me showing up, this total stranger who doesn't know the first thing about kids or running a restaurant, and her trying to do everything all by herself. It's just too much, that's all. Who wouldn't go a little off their nut? <sighs> I better get that. The line to the regular phone got burned up in the fire, so now the only phone we got is the coin phone on the porch. Excuse me. Oh, no! Emily? My mother's jewelry! It's gone! Someone must have stolen it while we were all downstairs. I knew something like this was going to happen. I just knew it. You mean, this sort of thing has happened before? Yes. I mean, no. I mean, I'd rather not say. But I will say this. I did not leave the stove on. That fire was not my fault. Oh, what am I going to do? Without that jewelry, I don't have a prayer of paying for a new stove. And without a stove, I'll have to sell the inn. And if I lose the inn... I wish Mom were still here. I wish Josiah Crowley had left us the money like he always said he was going to. That's what I wish. Who's Josiah Crowley? He was this old man that lived next door. He died last year. He spent most of his time here at the inn, and he led my mom and me to believe that he'd left a lot of money for us in his will. He gave us a clock, and afterwards, he'd always point to it and get this little twinkle in his eye and say, time will tell. But when they finally found his will, he didn't leave us a penny. Did he have any family? No. He always said Mom and I were his family. Josiah was kind of a screwball. <laughs> One time he showed up at my birthday party dressed as my great-aunt Harriet. 
I didn't know it was really him until two days later. Anyway, he had all these weird hobbies, and he always thought it would be really keen to read minds. Josiah invited Richard Topham to move in so Topham could help him develop his paranormal powers right there in his house. Josiah was a sweet old man, and I do miss him, and he was free to give his money to whomever he wanted. But to get our hopes up like that, and then leave us nothing, it just wasn't like him. Where is Richard Topham now? He still lives in Josiah's house, which is right down the path out back. His house and the inn were built at the same time by two brothers during the Civil War. Question, were the brothers on the same side, or were they on opposite sides? Because that was a common thing during the Civil War. Like, families were split. Just a, just a side question. Was your mother's jewelry insured? Gosh, I forgot about that. I don't know. Jim Archer, I bet he'd know. He's our banker. I guess I should go talk to him. You don't sound very happy about it. I'm just so bad at business things. And Jane, my guardian, she tries hard, but she's no good at it either. Maybe you could go talk to him. Please, it would be such a big help. Sure. He runs the Main Street Bank. You can't miss it. I'll call him and tell him you're coming. How many people knew you kept your mother's jewelry in here? No one. Well, Jane, my guardian, she knew, but I didn't tell anyone else. I'll be back in a little bit. Don't forget to call your father. Okay then, looks like that's the end of that. And I'm gonna end it here. I know this is probably short, but um, to be honest, I wanna try and make sure this records and I can edit it. So that's gonna be the end of this episode and I hope to see you guys in the next episode. Goodbye.